Savior. I will learn of Him each day. I will follow in His footsteps. I will walk the narrow way. For He loves me, yes, He loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know. Jesus loves me, died to save me. This is why I love him so. Good morning again, viewers. Uh, we thank you again for an opportunity to join us in this devotion today. And uh, today we are going to study another characteristic that makes us unique as Adventists. That is the teaching about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Before we begin, I'd like us to bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again this morning for an opportunity to study your word, and we pray that as we look into the subject of the second coming, we pray that you may give us wisdom and understanding to know how to conduct ourselves for this great day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again. Um, the second coming of Jesus Christ. The word Adventist actually comes from the word Advent, which is the second Advent, the second coming of Christ. And that is something uniquely taught by the Sunday Adventist Church. And so we want to understand the importance of this doctrine, especially when the times that we are living today. Um, the Bible speaks a lot about the soon return of Jesus Christ, the end of this world. In the book Psalms 50 verse 2 to 4 it says, Out of Zion the perfection of beauty, God hath shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous around about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. So God from the Old Testament, people have been looking forward, not just for the second, the first advent of Christ, but the second advent. And also Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 3 says, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. All right? So the day, the second coming, is the day of judgment. That is the day of the Lord's anger. And we are told, let us seek the Lord that we may be hid on that day. And so today, do people really look forward for the second coming of Christ? We're so busy with this world's uh, issues. There are many pressures, there are many things to be done. There are a lot of distractions that many people may not be spending time to think about the fact that Christ is about to come back. In fact, in the book Revelation 1 verse 7 it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Many of those that are not interested about his soon coming, when that day comes, they will wail because of him. Okay? We read from the book Child Guidance, page 555, paragraph 5, it says, Transgression has almost reached its limit. Confusion fills the world and a great terror is soon to come upon human beings. The end is very near. God's people should be preparing for what is to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. So we as God's people should not be caught by surprise. We should be preparing for what will come to the world as an overwhelming surprise. Okay, And also we read further in Great Controversy, page 622, it says, the time of trouble such as never was is soon to open upon us and we shall need an experience which we do not now possess and which many are too indolent to obtain. It is often the case that trouble is greater in anticipation than in reality, but this is not true of the crisis before us. The most vivid presentation cannot reach the magnitude of the ordeal. In that time of trial, every soul must stand for himself before God. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in the land, as I live, says the Lord, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Okay, so that time of crisis is soon to burst before us. And we can see the signs of 
this crisis, we can see a lot of um, turmoil, political, economic, social turmoil everywhere. The nations are warring against each other. The economies that we have been used to are breaking apart. And so we know that we are in the last days. And we continue to read in the book, A Higher Calling, page 340, we should study the great way marks that point out the times in which we are living. We should now pray most earnestly that we may be prepared for the struggles of the great day of God's preparation. And finally, the book Testimonies for the Church, volume 7, page 14, he says, Those who place themselves under God's control to be led and guided by Him will catch the steady tread of the events ordained by Him to take place. Inspired with the spirit of Him who gave His life for the life of the world, they will no longer stand still in impotency, pointing to what they cannot do. Putting on the armor of heaven, they will go forth to the warfare, willing to do and dare for God, knowing that His omnipotence will supply their need. And so we, we want to look for the waymarks. We need to study the events that are happening in the world today so that we know what we need to do for that great day's preparation. So it's my prayer, my brother, Priscilla, this day that we should prepare for the coming crisis. We can see events taking place, and we know that soon Christ will be coming soon. And so it's my prayer that we should be ready and that Lord will hide us in the day of his anger. May God bless you. I'd like us to close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the privilege to be living in these last days. And Lord, we can see the events of prophecy fulfilling before us. And we pray that you may give us the wisdom and understanding to prepare and be ready for that crisis that will come upon the whole world that we shall be hid in your pavilion as you bring judgments upon the world. We pray that also those that are seeking you will get ready, that we shall all be ready for that day. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty Father, hear our prayer and bless all souls that we be